Hi friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric Sun, and I'm an incoming medical student at McMaster University. Today, I'll be giving you my comprehensive list of resources that I used to score a 523 on the MCAT in the 99th percentile. All of the resources that I'm gonna be talking about in this video can be found in the description below. There's a lot of information in this video. So if you ever need a refresher, make sure to come back, look at the timestamps in the description and revisit the parts that are most relevant to you. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe because it really does help the channel. And I'll be posting more med school related videos every single week. Enjoy. I get asked this question a lot. For a quick answer, I would say that most people study for eight hours a day for three months. Usually people write it between their second and third year of university. So a lot of people take the summer to study and prepare for it. But that time you take really depends on you and your goals. You need to ask yourself two questions. How well do I already know the material and what's my goal score? I would say usually people find that time to be three months to try to achieve their goal. But again, it really depends on you and what your situation is. If you feel like three months really is enough time for you or if you have other commitments going on, you could always extend that time. Conversely, you could always do it a bit faster if you feel like it's going a little bit too slow. For me, I did take three months and I broke that into two phases, a one month content review phase and a two month practice question phase. If you wanna see a template of my study schedule, feel free to look down in the description, use it, copy it, do whatever you want with it, and hopefully it'll help you in some way. In the content review section of my plan, I was focusing on understanding the material without taking any detailed notes. I found that taking notes really ate into a lot of my time, but I did make sure to take note of the things that were difficult to me so that I could come back to them and revisit them later. In the practice question phase, I was really focused on doing practice questions and practice tests. I only went back and looked at the notes I did make or any MCAD books or resources if I was really struggling with a concept. I've seen a lot of schedules that plan out every single second of your day. And for some people that might work really well. But for me, I didn't really like that. Instead, I like giving myself a certain number of manageable tasks and then giving myself the flexibility to complete those throughout the day. My friend Benson recently taught me to macromanage instead of micromanage. Give yourself a few tasks every single day that you have to do instead of planning out every single meticulous second of your day. This really helped me because I was a meticulous micromanager. I would plan out every single second of my day. And if I ever fell behind, then I'd feel very stressed about it afterwards. So I'll talk more about this in a future video. But for now, try to give yourself five tasks that you have to complete that day instead of having to complete them at fixed time slots and adding to your stress load. If you're using this method responsibly and not as a way to procrastinate, it'll help you stay really flexible and avoid a lot of the burnout that comes from the added stress of studying. Try it for yourself. If it works, amazing. This is easily the question I get the absolute most from anyone that's interested in writing the MCAT. Okay, so let's start with what you should be using for content review. The very first thing you should do is get yourself a set of MCAT books. Either Princeton Review or Kaplan are awesome for content review, and I've had friends that do well with both. Personally, I used Kaplan because I was working for them at the time and I got a very steep discount. However, neither book is perfect, but both are great ways to familiarize yourself with the content on the MCAT. These books are essential, and they also come with some free practice tests. Now, they're not the greatest, but they do help towards building some stamina and getting a rough sense of where you're at. I have my study schedule that I used for the Kaplan books, as well as a lot of the links to both these sets of books in the description below. Kaplan also has these things called quick sheets, which summarize the entire set of books in 24 short pages. So it might be good to read these once over when you're first starting to get a sense of how much you know, as well as towards the end of practice to summarize everything you know in a short condensed version. I also have links to a detailed formula sheet, as well as everything the MCAT covers down in the description below. I was most worried about the car section of the MCAT because I heard it was the hardest to improve and something that you couldn't really study for. I looked through the cars books for both Kaplan and the Princeton Review and found that I didn't really like the strategies in either book. I read through the exam crackers 101 passages and verbal reasoning book and I found that was really beneficial towards developing my car strategy, which you can learn about up here. The book is a little dated, I think from 2008. But the content in the book is still better than a lot of the new books that are being published. The book also has some great cars practice passages, so I was doing a few every single day, but I found that they were way harder than anything on the actual MCAT. If you can do well in these practice passages, you're going to crush it on the real thing. 
On the same topic for cars review, there's this awesome book from the Princeton Review. If you Google hyperlearning cars PDF, you should be able to find it online and go through it for free. It was the single best practice I had for all of my studying for cars, so I would highly recommend it to anyone preparing. Lastly, for content review, Khan Academy. For those of you that don't know, Khan Academy is an amazing free online platform that has a lot of educational resources for any subject, including the MCAT. They actually work together with the AAMC to create these videos so you know that they're reliable and relevant. Personally, I use Khan Academy to go over some of the concepts I was struggling with during my practice question phase, but I know a lot of my friends did use Khan Academy for content review as well. Another amazing thing I found was a 300 page document made by a really keen pre-med back in the day on the psychology and sociology section. It basically summarizes all of the Khan Academy videos and gives you everything you need to know about that section. I found it was insanely detailed and covered everything that came up during my practice. Honestly, I'd recommend looking at that 300 page document first before reading any of the psychology and sociology books from any of the MCAT companies. Okay, so those were some materials that I thought were really useful for content review. To quickly summarize, I went through the Kaplan MCAT books, but you can also use the Princeton Review. I read through Exam Crackers 101 Passages and Verbal Reasoning, and I also watched a few videos from Khan Academy. Next, I want to talk you through three things that I think you should really build into your studying routine. MCAT Question of the Day, Anki, and Jack Weston. MCAT Question of the Day are free questions that are emailed to you every single day, and they're awesome. They are great for regular practice and helping sure that you're staying disciplined and studying a little bit every single day. They also help you to get back on task if you're ever feeling distracted. For those of you that don't know, Anki is a spaced repetition and active recall software. Basically, you can think of it as smart flashcards. Using Anki basically has two sections, making cards and reviewing cards. Now, making your own cards is a great idea if you can consistently make new ones and review all your old ones. If you are making cards, make sure you really emphasize quality over quantity and you're getting rid of any cards that aren't useful to you. It doesn't matter how many cards you go through if you don't get anything out of them. However, if you're lazy like me, you'll just use someone else's deck that's been pre-made for you. Shout out to Premed95, the person that made this amazing Anki deck for the psychology and sociology section, also found in the description below. To save some time, I would really recommend you take advantage of all the amazing resources that are out there. Jack Weston is a free online platform you can use to practice Cars passages. They post a new one every single day, and they have a huge archive of all the ones they've ever posted in the past. In my video about how to improve your car score, I talk a lot about getting the main idea of the passage. That's what you should use these Jack Weston passages for. Jack Weston doesn't have the same logic as the AAMC. In fact, no company really does. So you shouldn't get used to the style of question or the logic behind some of the answers, but instead you should be focusing on getting the main idea and focusing on your weaknesses, recognizing them and improving for next time. The earlier you start practicing, even just a single passage a day, the more exposure you get to cars and the more time you get to build the skill set you need to succeed. Okay, so we've covered your resources for content review and for building a daily routine. To summarize the steps of my daily study routine, I would go through the MCAT question of the day, go through the Jack Weston passage, and then work on reviewing my Anki cards for that day. Lastly, I want to talk about the resources that I used for the practice question phase. Now, a little disclaimer, these do cost money. Blueprint Prep, or Next Step when I used it, offers a lot of practice tests, question banks, and tools to help you plan your studying. Most of these things cost money, but they do have one free practice diagnostic test, as well as one free full-length practice test that I thought were pretty good. If you're looking to buy additional resources, which I would really recommend if you can, I would recommend buying the four exam bundle pack. This gives you access to the first four full length tests as well as five attempts for each one. If you're not using all five attempts, you could look into reselling or potentially sharing that account with other people as a way to try to save some of the cost. In my research, I found that the question banks as well as the practice tests from five and onwards were not as beneficial as the first four. So maybe not worth it. UWorld is another great paid resource that has just shy of 2,000 practice questions, but no practice tests. They have over 1,900 questions with lots of pictures and very detailed explanations. When I was doing UWorld, I would do blocks of 59 questions in an hour and a half, the same as the real test. UWorld makes it really easy to make my practice as close to the real thing as possible. For me, I bought the 90-day access, which means I got access to the full question bank for 90 days 
But unfortunately, unlike Blueprint Prep, you only get one attempt at each question. So I wouldn't recommend you share your account with anyone else because if your friend you're sharing your account with gets to a question first, then you won't get an honest try at it. I honestly cannot recommend you rolled enough. It was probably the best content review practice that I had during my studying, and I highly recommend you pick it up. Lastly, I wanna talk about the AAMC, the Association of American Medical Colleges. Their practice materials are easily the most important because they come from the same people that make the MCAT. They're the most representative materials, so if you're on a tight budget, I'd really recommend picking these up first. I recommend you pick up the MCAT official online only prep bundle as it gives you access to all of the practice questions in the question packs and section banks, as well as access to all of the full length tests. Now, a word of caution, you should be saving these until the very end of your study because they are the most representative of the real thing and will give you the best indication of what you'll actually score. Side note, Reddit is an online forum for basically everything, including the MCAT. If you're struggling with a concept or you can't figure out a question, you can usually go to the MCAT subreddit, look up the question, and you'll find that somebody has asked the exact same one and somebody else has graciously answered it and walked through every single step you need to solve it. So to summarize all my practice materials, I used Blueprint Prep, formerly known as Next Step, UWorld, as well as AAMC for practice questions and practice tests with Reddit to help me through some of the questions that I was struggling with. And that's it. Everything I used to score a 99th percentile on the MCAT. But there is one more question that I get a lot. Should I take a course? Well, courses are really expensive. So it's a lot of personal choice on whether or not you should take one. Courses can help you focus on your weaknesses and they can also help you make a study schedule. One of the biggest things about the course is that you get access to a tutor or a teacher in a lot of them. And they'll help teach you and walk you through the questions you may have. Additionally, they have a ton of practice questions and practice tests, but I have heard that they're not as representative and more difficult than the real thing, depending on which course you take. Also, courses require a lot of discipline to stay on track, and let's not forget that they can cost upwards of $3,000. Additionally, a lot of these companies really focus on teaching test-taking strategies, which is important to an extent, don't get me wrong, but they don't do a great job at teaching content, like a lot of the other free resources out there. You might see a short-term improvement from a better understanding of test-taking strategy, but you might not get that long-term improvement of having a better understanding of the material. Ask yourself if you can accomplish the things a course does for you and decide whether or not it's right for you based on your situation. How to save money, one of the most important things. The MCAT and applying to medical school in medical school is all really expensive. So you should be trying to cut some costs where you can starting early. Plan ahead and avoid any unexpected travel costs. Register for the exam quickly. A lot of exam sites fill up really soon and you don't wanna be paying extra fees to travel across the country. If you do need to change your test date, make sure you're mindful of the rescheduling fees that the MCAT charges you. Basically, there are different zones and the closer you are to your test, the more expensive it will be to reschedule. Try to do as well the first time around as possible. If you put as much effort into it as you can, you might not have to rewrite the test in the future. Invest in materials reasonably. I would say the only necessary paid resources are the ones from the AAMC. All other paid resources are helpful, but there are very similar quality resources like Khan Academy that do it for free. Ask your network. Look for MCAT books or resources that can be borrowed or bought at a significant discount. Share products with friends and try to divide the costs. Lastly, try to apply for the Fee Assistance Program. The Fee Assistance Program helps those that demonstrate financial need by giving you a significantly reduced registration cost, as well as all of the AAMC products for free. That alone is a value of I think just shy of $500. So those were all the resources that I used to score in the 99th percentile of the MCAT. As always, all of the resources I used can be found in the description below. I hope that you really take something meaningful out of this and that helps you in some way. Comment below with your favorite tip and how it helped. I just wanna put out a quick disclaimer that this is what I used for the MCAT and what worked for me might not work as well for you. Try to watch as many videos as possible. Try to experiment with different strategies, use different resources. Find out what works for you. At the end of the day, you have to find out your unique study strategy. It's great to have you here. I had a lot of advice from my friends in medical school when I was applying, and I'm really excited to pay that forward to you. Thank you for watching and subscribe to stay tuned to new videos every single week. That's been your daily dose of Medi Sun, and I'll see you in the next video.